Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Uh, today we are going to talk more about the Green Sahara and the people that were uh, living around that time, what was going on with their diet. Um, we'll talk a little bit about domestication uh, and Libya, actually. So uh, this takes us to the Takakori Rock Shelter, which is a, a pretty uh, well-known rock shelter that, according to the mainstream anyway, there are people living there as far back as 10,200 years ago. If we just really quick uh, look at, these are the, basically the archaeological layers. So there's the late Achaicus period, which refers to the Achaicus Mountains, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. This is the earliest layer of uh, known human occupation at the site. And then pretty much the long story short of this site, uh, there are more and more people who were uh, either domesticating animals and, and living as pastoralists as it got more and more arid. So it's a very interesting article to see, largely based on uh, all these fish fossils that they found. They were able to combine that with other knowledge of nearby sites, other rock shelters, uh, rock art that was depicting the changing fauna, and it even depicted uh, people who were riding horses. All of this happened gradually, and you can see this in the fossil record and in the archaeological record. So it was uh, one of the, um, uh, again, a pretty well-known site. So this centers on the Takakori Rock Shelter, which is, again, in the Achaicus Mountains. And if you guys can see this map, it centers on Libya here. So this is um, a map of Libya, Libya around this time period, 8200 to 7000 years uh, BC, 7000 uh, BC. And you can see in the southwestern part, you can see not only are these networks of uh, rivers and lakes, but also the mountain, the mountain range. And they found rock art all along the border uh, of Libya and Algeria. So again, th this must have been a hotbed of uh, human activity right after and probably right before the Younger Dryas period. And you can see Lake Chad. These are all the lakes that were, uh, that were here uh, and thriving at the time. So of course, there are people living there. If there's water. In the fossil record, they found larger uh, mammals like giraffes, elephants, and, and the like. And all this was also depicted in the rock art. So this article, New Scientist, uh, came up on my desk and I thought it was pretty interesting. So the, the different species of fish that they had or that they found at the time were tilapia and catfish, which were, of course, uh, hunted by animals and humans. So as they investigated the fossil record, they saw that the fish populations were dwindling as the changing climate was going from from a more humid climate that, that again, supported a, a more uh, diverse set of um Bio, uh, I guess just more di biodiversity and then the lakes and swamps started drying up and then eventually the people's diet started to change people started leaving in droves and then eventually it became the arid desert that it is today and uh, I have a more detailed uh, aridification episode regarding the green Sahara period but this is more uh, focused more around the fossils from this uh, Takakori uh, rock shelter about 5,500 BC, or 5,500 years ago, so about 3,500 BC, right around the time uh, the Bronze Age was uh, kicking off in different parts of Europe and, and the Middle East. The cave was really close to a large pond, and again, it was ideal for ancient human occupation. Humans at this time largely were cave dwellers, but there there was a ton of different uh, stuff going on, and and you could see right around this time as well it, it, in Australia on the other side of the globe, people in Australia. And let me pull up the map here, just to give you guys a, a visual. Uh, people all the way in Australia, actually Southwest Victoria, had an aquaculture as well. Obviously, it wasn't. The, the exact same as what they found in Libya because, you know, these were channels, these were stone, these were networks. But in Libya, anyway, they were eating fish all the same and a lot of fish as well. So let's get back to the article here. So uh, the, um, Delernia, who um, was the, the head excavator and or the head uh, examiner of the fossils, they looked at a huge uh, repository of fossils and again, they dated them according to the archaeological period, the, Ach the late Achaicus period, which is 10,200 uh, years ago. 
So as old as those and as recent as 4,650 years ago, he, they were analyzing all of these fossils. And then again, they noticed that early on there were rhinos, hippos, large animals that were being supported. Again, there was a lot of water, a lot of resources, a lot of abundance. The fossils within that oldest layer, the 10,200-year-old and 8,000-year-old layer, 90% of the animal material belonged to fish. Again, this included catfish and tilapia, two very, uh, even to this day, are, are you know, highly, uh, I mean, very common fish that people eat. Cut marks on the bones suggest that they were human, uh, or humans were um, messing with them. Obviously, there's piles of them. There's uh, middens, which, which are basically trash or leftovers that they just... Uh, kept in these huge piles and the same thing is seen in uh, North America as well in Florida there are midden piles um, along what's now the beach they found midden piles and stuff like that so again a lot of this is not new but it's very interesting to see more and more stu stuff come out of the Sahara and again it just goes to show that there the Sahara was once a life-giving provider of life and there was a, and it makes up a huge swath of land. I mean, this is a lot of it now is near uninhabitable, at least not the way it was inhabited back then. Maybe if I can zoom in here. Yeah, this is a better uh, zoom. So you can see uh, all of these areas are f littered with rock shelters, uh, paintings, all of that stuff. So the oldest dates of these rock, rock shelters, uh, just as an aside, the oldest accepted dates are 12,000 BC, but then they're almost as recent as 300 BC. So again, they tell the story, like I said before, um, and again, it corroborates the fossil record. This is this is uh, what I'm trying to hit home here. I mentioned men, men and horses, uh, which indicates some sort of domestication. Twelve that up to uh, 12,000 years or 12,000 BC, so 14,000 years ago. Um, people were domesticating uh, horses, allegedly. Uh, again, this is all according to rock art and stuff like that. And not only that, here's another interesting um, little interesting wrinkle here. Libya is home to the site of the earliest appearance of processed milk lipids on ceramics. So this dates to about 7,500 before present. So 5,500 BC, again, that, that number. 5,500 BC, everywhere all over the world it seems like a very very uh, important time and people again if people 5,500 years ago were either domesticating animals processing milk and and distributing it and storing it in ceramics and stuff like that that indicates again a, a practice that is really hard to believe that it was just springing up 5,500 or 7,500 years ago um, this seems like a very uh, interesting practice. And when you just look at the geography of this place, it's very close to Algeria and Morocco. So Morocco, again, was home to to Jebel Uhud Man, which is the oldest homo sapiens that we found uh, to date, which is about 315,000 years ago. So this area is very ancient. It's been uh, traversed many times by different species of human and not only that, uh, it's home to the Berbers and the Berber language. And actually, uh, the romanization is Achaicus Mountains, but uh, the actual name, Tadrart uh, Achaicus. So Tadrart, I'm butchering this, this is completely an Americanized uh, uh, pronunciation, is the Berber word, the feminine form of mountain. So that's pretty interesting. So why why the Berbers? Why is this important? Well, the Berbers, there's a lot of speculation behind uh, the Berbers. A lot of people think that they're the stragglers from Atlantis because, again, if Atlantis did exist, it would be located around here where uh, in the North Atlantic Ocean near the Azores Plateau. That's They're very close to the Canary Islands, which, again, um, the Berbers or the people there and the Berbers are there. There's some sort of relation there, and also um, it's very interesting that their their uh, uh, language still exists to this day, even though they're such a very they're an ancient people. And I had a commenter about a year ago who who lived in in Algeria, uh, because I was talking about um, some the tombs that they found in Algeria that date uh, I think about around the same time. 
he, uh, he, that person was telling me about the Berbers were able to preserve their culture for a long time, despite all the um, turmoil and insurrection that they, they lived through uh, in their in their history. So um, it's very interesting. Again, there's just a lot of wrinkles in here. But anyway, I, I'm kind of bearing the lead. As Again, so they, they look through uh, the fossil record, and as they get younger, so higher in the layers... Um, instead of 90% of fish bones, it became 48% of the remains were fish bones. And then um, more and more bones started to belong to mammals such as sheep, goats, and cattle. Again, all of these domesticated animals. So you can see the, not only the shift in diet indicates not only um, the shift in climate, this desertification, but also a shift in a way of life and a shift in um, culture essentially because obviously when your way of life changes um, the culture changes just by default because you know the the human experience changes due to the climate and it's just this huge domino effect um, the fossil record also suggests that the saharan environment began to dry out around 7400 years ago so again 5500 bc this is a very um, mysterious time period. There are a lot of dates. If you follow my channel since day one, then you'll start, no doubt you'll see a pattern of a bunch of different dates, like seven, 700,000, 800,000 years ago, um, 75,000 years ago, 41,000 years ago, tw obviously the most famous one, 12,800 years ago, the Younger Dryas boundary. Um, 5,500 is a very interesting one now because it's the oldest, uh, especially in, in Australia, the oldest uh, human occupied uh, um, rock art, the, the oldest um, aquaculture ever, um, all, all of these dates. And w one must wonder that it was either uh, some sort of cataclysm that led to this sudden shift in climate or something must have happened um, where, where it, it, everything just started to shift. That's the best way to explain it. Uh, the climate was shifting. People were shifting. People were migrating. There was a lot of movement, a lot of change. Um, it, you can almost say that it was a passing of the guard, so to speak. Same thing with um, another day, uh, the the Bronze Age collapse. Um, that, that happened a few thousand years later. And no one really knows what happened. And, and a lot of speculation, again, has gone toward uh, this climate shift or a series of climate shifts. So another thing they noticed was the decreasing size of, of the tilapia fossils. Again, that just speaks to lesser resources, lesser room. And this whole thing is just a lesson in dramatic landscape change and how people were able to adapt. And it, de it did not mean the, the end of a population. These people just moved. They, adopted, uh, they, they adapted and adopted different practices. And it's just very interesting because it seems like Although early on, 10,200 years ago, at the beginning of the late Akakas period, um, these people weren't, they weren't just fishing though. Although they found 90%, most of the bones were fish bones, they were, they were still pastoralists there. There were some. And then as, as you get higher in the layers, there are more and more evidence of people adopting the pastoralist life, lifestyle. So that leads me to wonder, uh, were the early adopters, so to speak, of pastoralists, were they, were they visitors? Were they people p passing on this stuff? Or were these people on the fringes who sort of per, uh, ended up penetrating the culture b as the uh, climate shifted and life became harder and harder without being a pastoralist? Um, I think that it, it might be something along those lines. And although the, the, these articles uh, don't mention the genetics, I'm sure there's some genetic element to this. Um, and around that time, I would hypothesize that there were people, genetics coming in from, from some other regions, perhaps Asia Minor, perhaps through um, modern day Spain and, and um, Morocco. Um, they could be coming from all directions, maybe from Egypt or, or Israel. Uh, whatever it was, the Fertile Crescent, maybe these people were going through. Um, who knows what was going on? Wait, the Fertile Crescent would be way later. It would be much younger. Scratch that. Um, these people, probably from Turkey, probably from the Caucasus Mountains. Um, they, if they're riding horses, chances are that they were probably from the steppe, like the Scythians, like I mentioned before, and in, in countless other episodes. But either way, I. 
I tend to believe that these people had these skills already figured out by the time um, that the, these fish bones were eaten and, and desertification was going on. So according to P this PLOS1 uh, research article, just to give you guys some more uh, details, uh, the Takakori Rock Shelter were early Holocene hunter-gatherer fishers locally called late Akakis. So again, 10,200, 8,000 uh, years, years before present. Archaeological and archaeobotanical evidence indicates prolonged, albeit seasonal, residential occupation and a delayed return system of resource exploitation. So stone structures of different sizes and functions were found, so huts, windbreaks and platforms, fireplaces, large grinding stones, abundant pot pottery, point to a semi-sedentary lifestyle. So again, that's very interesting, um, semi-sedentary lifestyle. So they not everybody was, again, hunter-gatherers. Um, and then this is indicated by other nearby sites as well. So again, this must have been a pretty uh, uh, substantial community occupying a huge amount of space. I mean, this area would be teeming with people because, again, you had shelter, you had a uh, pretty decent climate at the time, um, abundant food. I mean, if there's megafauna living there, rhinos and elephants, then there's a lot of food for sure to sustain those types of populations in addition to people. Um, so again, uh, they were uh, 8,300 uh years ago they were already burying women and children um so again they there is a problem most likely religion going on as well um dairying again was going on i mentioned the the milk lipids that they found in the ceramics um nomadic herders again they're they're nomadic there are here's something that i have to explain every now and then People are nomadic. People, a lot. Of, if you get any in any given population of humans, there's going to be some intrepid explorers. So just the fact that the human spirit, by default, is curious, you're going to have explorers going around. And if you have a horse, and you have if you come from a culture with with horseback riding skills and and husbandry skills, um, you can probably cover a lot of distance in a short amount of time. So I I would it would not surprise me one bit if a, there are a large influx of people. Um, br bringing in horses and teaching the locals how to uh, uh, raise horses and domesticate sheep and or goats or, or cows or other animals that can be domesticated. So, um, again, uh, that's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, I just have a few announcements. Um, obviously, leave a comment and stuff if, if this is interesting. If you're the person from Algeria and you commented last time, please, please comment on this um uh, episode. I would love to hear your take on this about um, your the local culture, how the Berbers interacted with the people around um, around them. I know that they were they were persecuted for a long time, but I mean the, the more ancient history. Uh, I would be very interested in that, um, or anybody else if you, if you know that. Um, so I have uh, an announcement. So every Friday uh, f uh, from one p.m. to three p.m. Pacific, starting tomorrow. Um, well, this, as of this recording, it's Thursday night, um, in, in the, in the West coast. So I'm going to every, so tomorrow for me, it's tomorrow, um, on Gri on the Grimerica radio, they've given me, uh, some access and they, they encourage me to, uh, do their radio, uh, do just a, a two hours. I'm going to, it's going to be really interesting. It's going to be a lot different from this. This is more of like, I'm, I'm deep analyzing, um, a specific subject. Um, the radio show is going to be more, I'm going to be playing some music. Um, I'll, I will be thumbing through some articles and just riffing on stuff like stuff that I've been reading. So if, if you're one of those people who's asking me for book lists and, and uh, reading suggestions, then I would definitely tune in because I'm definitely going to be tapping into some of that stuff and just discussing it. Um, uh, th th there will be a listener call in a uh, segment, but I, I, need to figure um the technical uh thing the, tech, the technicalities behind that because again i don't have a sound engineer or anything i run everything myself um this is a one-man operation um the, the grimerica guys have been kind to uh really let me um use their uh their radio their online radio station but it's not like i'm going in there i'm doing everything i'm operating from the same desk as i do this channel 
but yeah, uh, that doesn't mean any less content on here. I'm still going to be doing my my bi-weekly videos. Uh, to, I'm trying to get three a week, but I've just been so busy at work lately. Um, it's been hard to uh, get some mic time. Um, but uh, this one's going to be out probably, uh, if I don't get it out tonight, uh, early tomorrow morning. And so yeah, uh, go on Twitter, uh, send me some or comment here any questions at all i might start go, go, i definitely will actually go through some comments and listener comments um as far as a live stream goes i'm definitely going to be broadcasting i'm not sure if i'm gonna upload the recording on youtube or not uh because it's it's not going to be there's not gonna be any video or any visuals um i don't think well i might maybe i maybe i will uh, we'll see but it's definitely going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot more relaxed than this. Um, a lot more. Well, this is pretty casual. I don't know what I'm talking about. But anyway, uh, just leave a comment and let me know what you're talking about. Or let me <laughs> uh, just leave a comment and let me know what's on your mind. And I'll talk to you guys later.